Hiya, I'm Sebs, and chances are, if you're getting this video recommended to you, you're probably pretty new to digital art. And if you aren't, why are you here? From what I've noticed, there's been this huge boom in people wanting to become digital artists these days. And that's great, but it feels like there's this massive wall between program diversity, where some programs cost way too much money, or some programs are free, but aren't that good. So are there any really good free art programs? <laughs> Actually, yeah, there's some great ones. Just off the top of my head, I can think of a bunch of free programs. You got Fire Alpaca, Blender, IVSI Paint, Metavang, Sketchbook, or Krita, and just a whole host of different programs that are all great in their own right. But there's a problem with some of these, and that is the paywall. A lot of these are blocked behind a paywall, which means that no matter what you do, you're not getting the full features of the program you're working so hard to find. Which kind of sucks, because why have to pay for it if you know there's better programs that you could be spending your money on? There's also one more factor that kind of eliminates more of these programs. It's the huge learning curve. A lot of these have a massive learning curve, which makes it so hard to get into it. Like Blender. Blender is a great program, but it takes you months to learn. And often, when you have a problem, it's hard to find someone who could help you out. For me, it was really important for this video to have three criteria, and that is that the program itself couldn't have a paywall which blocked you from using the full thing, it couldn't have a massive learning curve which takes you months to learn, and it has to be something of decent quality. If I won't use it, I'm not going to recommend it to you. Okay, before the video actually fully starts, I feel it's important that I bring up I use Photoshop on the regular as my just base art program, and it is great, but a lot of these programs actually do it better. Some of them have features that Photoshop just doesn't come with stock, and so during the video I tried my best to remain unbiased, but I don't even think I needed to, because these were almost comparable. Anyway, sorry, that's enough buffering, let's get to the video. So with that all knocked out of the way, my final three programs are Metabang, Fire Alpaca, and Krita, which are all great programs and I can't wait to show them to you. So I guess let's get started. <laughs> okay, so first up is Metabang. Metabang was super easy to learn and actually really great. Despite it being the first on the list, I think it's a great starter and remember, these are in no particular order. For me, Metabang was one of the easiest programs out of all of them to learn. It was super intuitive and I really liked the layout. Everything felt super familiar to Photoshop, so for me, it was almost comparable. I think another reason for me getting into Metabang so fast was because the layout and all the keybinds were near identical. When I had to reset my tablet to make sure that all my keybinds were correct, I didn't really have to change any of them. Okay, anyway, Metabang's a great program, but as with any program, it also has its own downsides. So just real quick, let's talk about them. First off, again, I really want to state Metabang is a great art program, but when it comes to the drawing experience in every art program, that is what I'm looking for. And Metabang just somehow felt wrong. It was slippery at times and hard to recreate my own style. Heck, when I tried to, my own art style, which is already very sketchy, turned more sketchy somehow. And it kind of really turned me off to the program. I'm sure if I had more time to just use it and get used to it, I would honestly love it. But that really turned me off to the whole program. And it kind of affects my score for it, but overall the program's great. Also, I feel it's important to say, I don't think this is a program thing, but when I first started, I had to restart the program multiple times just to get my pressure sensitivity to work. I even checked with other programs and it was working fine, but just with Metabang, for some reason my pressure sensitivity was not working at all, and then suddenly it was. So, you know, I don't know. <laughs> just thought that might be a little important. Okay, next up, Fire Alpaca. Honestly, I could see myself using this as just my stock program. I really enjoyed using it, except for the fact the layout is on constant light mode and I can't change it no matter what I do and it's so intent on blinding me, I can't see, holy shit, why isn't there a dark theme? <laughs> okay, so outside of Fire Alpaca, you know, trying to blind me, uh, when I first opened the program, I didn't think it was going to be as good as it was. Honestly, when I looked at it, it felt super dated, and I don't know, I just, I looked at it and I was really turned off by just the whole layout. 
But that wasn't a problem in the end because everything is basically all customizable. I didn't, but you can if you want to. And when I was actually just drawing, I didn't even notice. I just toned it out, I guess. In comparison to Metabag, Fire Alpaca felt great. The drawing experience was amazing. It didn't feel slippery at all. It almost felt like I had smoothing on, but I didn't. It felt like a drawings program should. I was easily able to replicate my own style. It felt natural, and in comparison to Photoshop, it almost feels identical. Fire Alpaca also comes with a few features that aren't in Photoshop, or are in Photoshop, and it's just comparable. Like the perspective grid. Again, same as Metabank, Fire Alpaca comes stock with the perspective grid, which is just proof that almost every art program should have it, and it's weird that Photoshop doesn't. However, when I compare Fire Alpaca and Metabank's perspective grid, I actually prefer Metabank over Fire Alpaca in Saka. Uh, editor's note real quick, I have literally no idea what I'm talking about here. They're the exact same thing. So don't take my word for that. Both Fire Alpaca and Metabang have the same perspective tools. <laughs> Some ways, Metabang feels like a more refined version of Fire Alpaca, and in other ways, like the animation tool in Fire Alpaca, because Metabang doesn't even have it, it feels like Metabang is the unfinished younger brother of Fire Alpaca. Going into that animation tool though, Fire Alpaca's animation is really bad. Unfortunately, I love animation. Its tool for it is great that it's there, but it's not good. There's no timeline and you can't save as a GIF or a video, which makes saving your animations or exporting them really hard. You also can't watch it while you're making it, so those problems are only glaringly obvious until the very end, where then you have to guesstimate what frame it's on. So the animation tool isn't the best. It's good that it's there, it's just not good, sadly. Okay, and I guess finally, because we're at the end, we have Krita, which is a great program that I, I don't like. I, I just really don't. I don't like its layout when I stepped in and started using it. It felt weird. Krita itself is a great program. I don't think I had enough time to use it, though. I really feel like Krita got the short end of the stick, especially with this video. It could be a great program. I just did not have a good time using it. When I opened it, its layout seemed super dated, and just the general drawing experience felt off. Same with Metabang, it almost felt slippery somehow. Also, when I tried, I couldn't recreate my style as well as I could have with the other two programs. Even Metabang was easier for me to use. There's again though, <laughs> for the third time in a row, the, another feature that Photoshop doesn't have. With Krita, Krita has a great perspective grid. Better than Metabang and better than both Fire Alpaca, both of them combined. I really like this one much more. It also comes with a great animation tool. Animation in Krita feels like, Krita just feels more like it's designed around animation. The timeline is one of the first things I noticed when I opened the program. In comparison to Fire Alpaca, Krita's animation felt so much better. The timeline just being there and accessible like that made using it so much easier. While Fire Alpaca's animation tool felt more like it was geared around short, small animations, Krita really felt like it was designed to be an animation tool. Everything felt nice and accessible. Fire Alpaca felt more like it was made for short, small animations. With Krita, when you're using it, it really makes you feel like you could animate whatever you want. It seems so much easier to use, and this is how you should do animation with any program, I think. Maybe with a better layout, but Krita, you're all right, I guess. <laughs> okay, out of all of them, I would probably recommend Metabank out of all of them. I didn't really like how it drew, but I feel like I could have gotten around that. If you're trying to look for animation, Krita is probably your best bet for free stuff. But again, Fire Alpaca and a bunch of other programs also do animation. Blender does animation, it just has a large learning curve. You can do so much with any program. Whatever you decide to do, you can make great art with it as long as you put your amount of effort into it. Don't take my word for it, 
go out and try these programs. They're all listed in the description, even a few more that I like, but cost money and I couldn't bring them up for this video. So in the end, does this really matter? Not really. Whatever program you decide to use is up to you. You can make great art with anything. I mean, look at this Santa I just found while looking up cool art. This was done on Microsoft Paint. Like, holy shit, what the fuck, dude? Ah! <laughs> Anything you want to make, you could do it so easily. So, go get him, champ, I guess? Except for that. Don't draw that. If you draw that, you're kind of weird. Anyway, goodbye.